Hi, people. My name is Kaitas Karisimbi, a.k.a. Nalongo. So I'm Nalongo Kaitas Karisimbi, and I'm a mother of two bulls, 11-year-old boys. They're tall, they're chasing the skies, but they've been my big lesson in life. 2020 and 2021 was very difficult and even more so because everybody was going through the same thing it felt like you couldn't run anywhere it was like a movie but then it trickled down eventually to the effects of it which we then look at financially everything melted down to the financial effects whether it's for your personal uh, part of it or it's uh, company your company like I had to close my salon I had just invested but it was the toughest decision to take, but I had to take it. I learned so many lessons the hard way. So we all learned that we needed to know a lot more about money. I didn't know much about money. I knew I had a passion. I knew I needed to put money into my passion to make money for me, but I didn't know so many things. And that's why financial literacy is so important. So I'm here to invite you. On the 22nd of February, we're going to have a podcast, courtesy of NSSF. So they've thought, how do we make you fall into that space where you understand money. Financial literacy is very important and they've understood it. The topic on that day is going to be reshaping, refocusing, repurposing. My why. So it is imperative that people find a way uh, to create a resilient setup in their finances, in their businesses, at places of work, in their families. So I find the agenda for 22nd Feb uh, very befitting and relevant. So this 22nd Feb, I'm inviting you to be in attendance on all the social media platforms uh, for NSSF and the Zoom link will be shared uh, for this talk, uh, which will uh, empower you financially, which will enable you to reshape, to refocus, and know your why. NSSF, a better life. Very, 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 very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the NSSF Financial Literacy Program this afternoon. My name is Apolombo, and as usual, I am the headmaster of this time, where we converge as a class, as students of money, and we learn about money. These are things that we're not taught in school. We are taught chemistry, biology. Most of us, when we, when we remember biology and physics, it's horrible things. But now you have a chance to do some other learning about money. We started to get money, and indeed, we are now studying about money. Why is it that we, are st we started to get money and we are not? We don't have that much money. We have those stories of where did my money go? This afternoon, we are going to be talking about my why. What is your why? And as usual, is my job is not to talk, but to have the experts do that. So we have experts. One thing I need you to remember that everyone is an expert on money. Everyone, given the number of years you have, are the number of it's the number of experience you have with with money. You all handled money right from childbirth. It brought you coins. They brought you uh, some some money and placed in your hands. So you have money, a lot of experience handling money. Actually, longer than the experience of you talking. So experts. When I say experts, everyone does that. That, that doesn't preclude you. It is even you yourselves are experts. But we need to bounce these ideas off each other once in a while. Have this money conversation. I am the headmaster of this, and as as and how I wish so that so the class will take shape. Allow me to just do an introduction, a small introduction. Mine is to just do the small introductions. Then they do the rest of the heavy lifting, but the credit still remains with the headmaster. And when you want to address me, please put on the sir before and the sir after. Sir headmaster, sir. Growing up is man optional, but growing old is mandatory. Everyone grows old, but not everyone grows up. Today we want to have a serious discussion of grown-ups. And if the live stream team is kind enough to share my slide, we are asking ourselves, why? What is my why? As NSSF, I will always keep bringing back these figures to you. Uh, the live stream team will be sharing these figures. 
we have had this story and we keep saying that we are if you are watching this and you are employed and you are part of nssf or you are part of public service or you are in the army or you have someone looking at or you are in the un you have someone looking at your pension you are part of the 11 percent few in uganda that have that 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 privilege not everyone of the of the labor force we have of 17 million people only 11 percent have someone who is looking at their retirement and saying when you retire take home something so as an nssf we want to bring that figure but also we want uh, we need you to understand the picture at nssf where we have only seven percent of our members you are our members only seven percent of you have a balance that is above 50 million that depresses us and nssf is your hugest hugest it's your hugest savings but then not so many have above 50 million 50 million in kampala can't do much lately and the experts will tell us as nssf again we have another figure that keeps puzzling us 60 billion leaves nssf to go to its owners in form of members who have qualified but we're asking where does that money go it's not uh, it's us overreaching yes but we need to ask those questions where does that money go because when we don't understand where this money goes money will keep going away like that from people's pockets from people's uh, asset bases and we will never have an end to it 56 percent of us have chosen to ask a household member or a brother or a sister or a relative for financial advice with all the financial advisors and all the different persons you go to your housemaid and ask them i have 20 million what can i do with it and they will give you something that they will tell you according no one has held a hundred million in your in, in your family but you are choosing to go to your family to ask for advice of a hundred million that that also uh, disturbs us because we see only five percent of our members in retirement i don't know if the live stream team is able to share those those slides with you but only five percent of our members attain not just our members but in the workforce even those in government attain financial independence meaning if they are able to drink water like what my panelists are drinking courtesy of renzori water when they retire they will still be able to drink that renzori water bottle off their pocket but most of us when we retire we have to get down we have to find our levels we and mean well, most of the times our children are encouraging us to go back to the village and saying that you see the village is uh, you, everything is good in the village there is no traffic jam there is less noise why, why ask yourself why aren't you, those children going to that village but they just want you to go out of the way because you have become uh, a disgrace to a society that should not be your future we've done over 30 webinars and we have talked about money over the last 18 months about we commenced in August of 2029, 2020, and we keep speaking. We have done, we have brought you over a hundred speakers, a hundred different professions, a hundred different authorities to talk about from the various in industries, from the, uh, we've, we've had the beta tourists here, we've had the, uh, talk about the, uh, the, the different MDs of CMA, URA, uh, IRA, a anything. We have brought all those people to talk about money. We have had over 30 topics about money. And in this room to produce this particular program that you're having, we have expertise of over 100 years. That's over 15 people. Their total experience in whatever they do comes over 100 years. They get down to do this just to bring you this program. And my question today is, but why? Why are we doing all this? hundred years of experience behind what you're seeing here is is a hundred years of experience collective experience everyone 10 years 20 years 30 years uh, of whatever they are doing to do what to, to do this and bring it to you and then my question is why are we doing this why as an SSF we are clear on this our why lies in three things but one we want to build a financially empowered membership two those statistics that I've talked about, they need to be reversed. We need to reverse that. And three, we are looking at a future where every member has an option, has options, not just NSSF. So we describe poverty as lack of options. If you have NSSF as your only option, if you look around your bank balances and NSSF is the only smiling balance, you are poor. And we are saying that should stop. As NSSF, our purpose has even been redefined further. We passionately, our purpose is to make lives better. We want you to be better. 
We passionately dedicate ourselves to making savings a way of life to enable more and more people improve their well-being. That's our purpose. The breaking news is, do you know your purpose? What's your purpose? Because as an organization, we know. As an individual, I will ask the people in, in the room, do you know? Apollo, do you know? Headmaster, do you know? Outside NSSF, you can articulate the purpose of NSSF. Do you have a purpose? Today, the members discuss purpose. So, we'll start with who we have today. Um, before we go on, I'll ask the back office team so that they underst we understand who we have in the room, who we have and the participants. Uh, the first poll is just us finding out who are you, you who is here. Are you male? Are you female? Are you below 20? Are you between 20 and 30? Are you above 40? Are you above uh, 50? Between 40 and 50? Who are you? We need to know. Why do we need to know? Because we want to articulate our conversations around that. And we also need to know your employment status. Are you in formal employment? Are you a business owner? Are you self-employed? Or are you unemployed? Uh, before we coming on this, we had the management about who a business owner is and who is self-employed. But for the purposes of this conversation, if, you are, if your business can't run without you, you are self-employed. You are an owner of a job. If your businesses can outlive you, or actually don't, don't even mind your existence, you're a business owner. So who are you? We want to understand that. And in three seconds, we should close that. Three, two, one. Let's see who we have. Who we have. And those are the results. Uh, my dear panelists, the people you're going to be speaking to, 44% are between 30 to 40 years. 30% are between 20 to 30 years. So your majority is below 40, between 20 to 40. 18% between 40 and 40 and 50. Those are the midterm access babies. And only 7% above 50. I, on terms of gender, just to download a bit, yes. Gentlemen, I, 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 I feel I, I always, this year we have come to have uh, really, really mature discussions. So we have 62% male today, 38% male or female, 38% female. Just to give a little uh, history about this, we have always had this reversed. The female is always dominating this. But I think that as the discussions get harder and harder, we get to drop some of them. But ladies, please come back. Next month is ladies month. Please come back and let's have this discussion. 77% of the participants are in formal employment. 2% are business owners. 11% are self-employed. And 10% are unemployed. Thank you so much. I hope you are getting that perspective. Allow me to introduce the panel for today. My favorite. My favorite. <laughs> But um, I, I will say this for everyone, so everyone will be my favorite. But Caritas Karisimbi, a radio, a Ugandan radio and TV presenter. She's a Nalongo. She prefers being called Nalongo Caritas Karisimbi. Caritas Karisimbi has, is currently works with uh, Next Media. She has she has worked with. She started work her workplace her work life with in WBS TV, with a Showtime magazine. She has grown up in Kamocha. Mm, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> She's grown out in Kamocha. She was a waitress at one time. She was uh, since I've seen her f uh, six back. She has, she has been a TV host. She is a TV host, but she has worked in quite a number of things. One interesting thing about Caritas is she speaks five languages. Yes, five languages. Known to us, we don't we uh, because I think even Jamaican is one of them. We welcome you, Caritas Karisimbi. Thank you so much for joining this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Pleasure's all mine. The big, the other, my favorite. Yeah, I don't know if my favorite can have three, but my other favorite, 
person Newton Buterawa from House of Wealth a gentleman who is a broker he's also a broker he's a broker a professional at that all of us are, all of us are yes all, all of us are the, the, the verses I've said coming Newton is passionate about money he has been preaching and speaking about money on various various media houses uh, one-on-ones platforms with Enterprise Uganda with NSSF and he's been doing this for the last so many years he has lost money he has been a money lender he has lost he has failed he has gone through the tunnels but he has always picked himself up he's on his journey to wealth and his latest challenge is to raise a number of billionaires in Uganda Newton thank you so much and my final favorite one Eddie Henderson Mugenyi Eddie Henderson Mugenyi started his career in the deep villages of uh, Kasese he has worked all his entire work life with human with humans he's a human resource uh, manager a specialist a people specialist he has worked for different workplaces in the banking hall right from the junior places to rising to an exco position Eddie Mugenyi is passionate about getting people to attain their uh, their full competence and capability He's a trainer, he's a mentor, he's a coach. Currently he works with the UN, so I can now say one of why this is one of my favorite uh, sports to introduce. When you can't be somewhere, but you introduce someone who was somewhere, you are almost there. So Edim Edim works with the UN. Now I can also say I am with the UN. He works with the UN currently as the people specialist. Thank you so much Edim for joining us and he will be our moderator for the day. Allow me to hand over to Edim Mgenyi to take that day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Headmaster. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Those are very humble words, I know. The panelists will also accept that those are very kind words from uh, the sir, Mr. Uh, Headmaster, sir. Uh, Headmaster, sir. We are happy to be here and would like to welcome our audience. I know that there are many people who are already logged on. The percentages are telling. Uh, to hear that we are having a, uh, over 60 percent male has been surprising uh, ladies please come uh, we have some gentlemen here please come uh, caritas is feeling lonely uh, let's have let's have some ladies continue to join us but we are happy to be here and we want to appreciate nssf uh, for what they are doing through the program of literacy uh, financial literacy the training and the beneficiaries that we have been able to have uh, over over the, the sessions that I think about, uh, in this case, uh, the, the headmaster has listed, we have benefited a lot, uh, me inclusive. Today, I, I, it's not about talk, talking about me. It's me trying to get the best stories out of these people, uh, people who are well celebrated in this country. Uh, while I was speaking to them, I was telling them that they are speaking to Uganda. And this is what NSSF has made possible. They are speaking to Uganda. Uh, the whole of Uganda is listening. And the topic today is, how do you refocus? How do you reshape? How do you repurpose? And how do you then define your why? And uh, I, 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 while thinking about how to get it out of them, I said the best way to do this is to ask them to share their story. And uh, Caritas Red is going first. I thought it would be important for you to discuss your story. But in this case, we are saying, help us identify where the whys were in the story that you have to tell regarding your journey uh, in, in your career. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's so interesting how I'm here and uh, our conversation is centered around my why. Because um, I actually discovered my why a couple of years ago. And it took a couple of events happening that I had to sit down and refocus. I basically went back to try and now reshape, refocus, and repurpose. But let me rewind. So of course, growing up, uh, I, I held money very early. How I held money very early is because I started working very early. I had responsibilities at a very early age. So I started working very hard. Waitress, you know, you earn the money. You know that at the end of the month, it's going to be this, it's going here, it's going here. My siblings have to go to school, da 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 da. It was easy to disperse. I didn't have a child, I didn't have, I, pff, my apartment was paid. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't focus a lot on money. 
But what did I know? I mean, in class, even in economics, it, it didn't fall anywhere into what life was presenting us. I mean, we just had to group around and, um, and try to understand what it all meant. But in that age bracket, when I started working, I was barely 20. Uh, yeah, you're calculating. <laughs> so, so yes, so I, uh, I was first of all thrown into the world where I could have been a millionaire at a very young age. I mean it. I could have been, but I knew nothing about money. I had opportunities that could have presented me money, um, big checks, but I knew nothing. I was focusing on my passion. So my passion seemed to be, I wouldn't even say my why, it was just my focus. And that's it during that age bracket. So for me, it was, I needed to do the show I was doing after the, the waitressing job. I went now TV when I ended up on TV. I, the money was there, but I knew my focus was in presenting the show, making sure that showtime is there. It's good. I, I have appeared. I look okay. And I'm, I've still got the energy. You know, I even joke around and say, I never even knew what I used to get for a salary. And that's so true. I could never remember. I, I know that there was money on the, on the account and I just disperse it however it would go. But that was it. I had a fetish for shoes. I, I, I was addicted to shoes. I would buy shoes. I'd walk into a store and I'd walk out with five pairs. I'd walk out with six pairs. I'd walk out with... As in, I, I was addicted to shoes. There's a point when I had almost 500 pairs in my house. And every time I see it, girls are like, oh, really? I didn't even believe it myself. It took... Uh, the, there are some journalists who came in to see. They, they used to do uh, shows about um, articles, about wardrobes, styles, and all. And they came to my house, and we counted the pairs. There were 400 and I think 60-something. And some of which I'd never worn, but that was money sitting right there. But I knew nothing. All I wanted is to make sure I look good. I want that shoe. I, my addiction had to keep going. So that phase went through. Money came through my fingers. I didn't notice you know, and then you hit 30, then, you know, then afterwards, of course, I decided, you know, I've got to take a break. I'd hit a stalemate. I didn't feel my juices anymore. I wasn't flowing anymore. So I said, you know what, I've got to take a break. But even in taking the break, I didn't think about the financial, what, what it, the implications of that. You're leaving your monthly. So what does that mean? Of course, I'm still single. I don't have kids. I didn't really think deep on it. I was like, okay, I've got some savings. I, I had, I, I still do. I love hair. I love hair, 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 hair. I mean, extensions, hair. I just, like, and I would meet people and I stop them and I'm telling them about the hair. I'm like, why is that? Why, why is your hair dry? Why is it brown? But I loved it. And when I was leaving media, I said to myself, I think I can just start a shop somewhere. That mentality is what many of the that gen, this generation go through. You or in Ayaka Saint let me just open up a castor. But some of them are aggressive, they find their way around, but then it is just the spontaneousness of it. You're you're not thinking it through. Okay, if I want to start the shop, how much am I going to pay? Okay, how much capital? What's the rent? Where am I as in I did not. I was being driven by my passion once again, but in a different age bracket. So I was repeating the mistake I was making in my 20s. Now I was repeating it in my 30s. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to get it done. My passion is going to drive me. So I, I used to travel. Musubuzi number one. You'd find me in China and you'd not even know I'm the one. Looking for the best bargains. Looking for the... I needed to get the best. My passion always pushes me for the best, whether it is TV, it's radio, and in that case, it was hair business. I started my shop. Again, it's a running open another shop. So things were flowing. You know, I felt like things were flowing. Eventually, I handed those shops to my sister. Pure unseriousness. Katia, I don't know what my plan was at that time. But Iran Chakula, of course, I was growing. And those were all experiences I was growing. I was learning. I was actually going to say, uh, when I was, uh, I was going to say I'm actually an expert in failure. It's just that I did not notice that it was happening over and over. I was repeating it. 
So eventually I thought to myself, when I went back to media, uh, yeah, fast forward, I chose to open a salon. Again, my passion. But you see you're on social media, you see all these salons that are bougie, they look, just the things that I want, I'm thinking, that should be me. I mean, I should do that. I mean, I can do that. So I find myself opening up a hair salon. But again, what do I know about money? Me and money, <laughs> my friend keeps saying, you, you know what? This heart of yours doesn't allow your money work for you. So you and money are not friends. Focus in your lane, find a financial manager. But she told me those things much later. Since I remember before, probably would have been elsewhere. But yes, I started the salon. My passion, I thought, would drive me. Which, the other mistake was, because I thought, oh, I've got a network of friends. I've got many friends. Surely I will never joke about my customers. I shouldn't. I mean, I'll be okay. I've got customers. I already have a starting <laughs> base. I've got all those friends that will show up. Mistake number one. For already, first of all, you're putting your friends under pressure, your network under pressure. I don't have to come because you opened the salon. Allow me to come on my own. So, but then that was the first mistake I made. So I wrote on that mistake. The other mistake I made, which many make, is understanding the business you're entering. I did not understand the business I was getting into. I just let my passion drive me, and I was so passionate. I was so passionate that even my workers didn't understand it. My angle was different. My angle was customer is key. My angle was hygiene. My angle was results. I need the hair. If you promise a person their hairline is going to grow, it better grow. Otherwise, don't tell them that. If they come and ask you about the skin, have you, have you asked them? Have you consulted with them? Like, I was really passionate, but I was forgetting the money. I invested so much. I made another mistake that many make. I have a job, so I'm thinking, salary loan. Why not? Yeah. I hadn't learned about bad debt and good debt. Do you know about it? Do you know what it means? There I was digging myself in my first bad, major bad debt. So I borrowed money, and as usual, they will say, ah, if you spread it through the many months, it will be comfortable. So, of course, I'm like, ah, every month, Kastan Sigazayo. We're okay. We shall continue. Cindy, that's the, another mistake. That's a, a humongous mistake that really, ah. Oh. So, yes, so you borrow and you put in. But again, because I do not know what I'm getting into financially, I literally just poured the money in. I would say, oh, I want those lights. I want those chandeliers. And I'm, it was never the time to buy them. And all those things that I see later on. But I put into the space. I made sure I create a space for the customers. Again, I was spending. But I didn't have a proper ledger. I didn't know what was going in, what was going out, why it should, why it shouldn't. I even, I even used to steal coke, you don't go this side. But it was my fault. Then later on, I thought to myself, I'm not going to shoot myself right now. Right now, I need this salon to work. Let me get someone who can manage it financially. And then while I focus on the passionate part, which would be the products, making sure clients are happy, you know, a general face of the place and, you know, promoting it. I made a huge mistake there again. I kept missing the folk. I kept, and I had people who would come and tell me, Curtis, you know what, I think you need to join one of those classes where they teach you about money. And oh, I said, yes, yes, I will. Yes, I will. But I was focused on my passion. So come 2020, I had just shifted. I was, um, I, when I first opened, I was at Lugogo Bypass. It was a washing bay, so of course you look Customers should be there, of course, but I got more male than female because the female, they were inconvenienced by the parking space. Then, but I didn't thought all that through. I thought, ah, we'll figure it out. But the men would come. They brought their cars. So you're coming in to cut your hair while your car is washed. Legit. So that was okay. It continued then, of course, I eventually I hit a snag, a few issues there. The money wasn't cut. Basically, I was not making money. I was just losing. I already had a bad debt and I was losing. And I was borrowing again, digging myself in further. And I never consulted. I did it all myself. I felt, I felt that I could do it all. I felt the money is me. It's me who's making the money. It's me who's going to pay it back after all. So let me feel the pinch. I'll do whatever I want to do. So another mistake. So I shifted the salon. Uh, end of 2019, I think. And uh, prime property. Everyone would ask me, how did you get the place? 
And I had already calculated in my head. I mean it. In my head. Not on paper. Yeah. I like how you create a flow plan and look at it from above. I'd created a ledger in my head and I was looking at it from above. And I knew that ah, I was paying rent of one mi what, one thousand dollars. I said, ah, that money I can get now. It's not hard. What is that? I calculated. I m created the space to be able to make money from every corner. So I had a plan. That plan was legit, by the way. It's still in my head. <laughs> I began to lay it on the floor. Floor plans. You break that wall. Put there another sink, another chair here. Umbrella so that they are comfortable. Bring coffee. As in, every corner was going to mint money. But how is that money going to? circulate and turn around and basically how was I going to make money? How was I going to make it work? I still was missing that point. So I was spending but not making and not even learning how to, you know. So I continued making that mistake. Then 2020, COVID hit. And it hit everybody. But I mean, our, our area is was a very sensitive place. Although, eventually, you got to learn that it's not actually very sensitive because we use soap, you use sanitizer, you have debt or you have what. So other than your mask and you breathing down on a client, your hands are clean, your space is not always sanitized. So, you know, I thought, ah, to Jacob Blunge. Ha! I had renovated, I had spent your... COVID-19 punch. <laughs> knockout, but I jumped to allow that it was going to be a knockout. It only happened... Actually, for me, when it hit, what happened is, first of all, I had struggled with the Wakozi because I didn't understand how the business ran. I didn't understand how Wakozi Baba Pasula, there's that word where they go and pay this one and they take them. So I didn't understand that if they can pay him and he lives there, they'll also pay him to live here and go. So it's money for them. It's not being in a, with a brand and growing the brand. Me, I was telling them, oh, yeah, brand, what? For them, they're thinking, yeah, they don't want Komitano, Mtualo, what? We were all thinking on different wavelengths. But I was trying, you know. So I said, yeah, through lock COVID, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll do door to door. I was essential. I was saying, okay. I'm saying this on TV. But yes, I thought, okay, if need be. Because we had, uh, I had also something else that uh, uh, I had forgotten. When I was starting, I thought, okay, since we have uh, this partnership, a swap deal with Next Media, dopest, I know. Now that's going to get me mileage. So, so that was there. So I was thinking, I can always transport somebody to go and do the other one's hair. Like, I thought I'd figure it out. Ha! Huh, little did I know. So I kept pushing, pushing. M meanwhile, remember, you're still paying the rent, of course, <laughs> piling up. Your clients are no longer really coming because of, you know, epidemic. Uh, the, uh, everything, the workers are slowing down. They're learning to do it on their own. So everything is changing, but I'm still refusing. Why? Because I'm thinking about my bad date. I'm thinking, ah, oh, dear. How am I gonna how am I gonna swim this tide? And honestly speaking, I couldn't have done it. And I keep saying it. I sat down, I told God, God, you know what? This thing has to happen. I have to close this business. And this is one thing that I need to tell millennials and not just millennials, everybody. When you get to a a, a spot where it, it's stagnant, get you to chigan, like it's refusing. Do not fear to first step away. Do not fear. You actually do more harm to yourself if you stay in and keep fighting. You're drowning, but you're still fighting. And instead of just f swimming back to the shore and rethink on how you're going to circumvent the wave. So for me, I had to pray. I told God, if, if you don't tell me when and give me the peace to close this salon, I'm going to break down. So every week I'd go to the salon and pray and pray. When, 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 when you're going to show me? And indeed the day came, I closed the salon and I made peace with it. But in my head I knew the reason why everything was shifting for me. My purpose with my TV show was shifting. It was like, sorry I'm bringing in a lot of God, but yes, God was showing me a different purpose. He was telling me, you should have waited. You were not even ready financially. You should not have opened that salon. In fact, you were meant to focus on the TV. I need you to go and talk to people, listen to people, da, 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 help them, open doors for them, nini, nini, through your network and connection. Here I was in a salon where I knew nothing, fading, losing, so I made peace and I closed it. And I told myself, I'm going to come back. I'm going to reshape. I'm going to refocus. I'm going to repurpose. I'm going to make sure I come and do it right. But I'm going to start small. 
I'm going to go back to, vet, to, to selling my hair, where, which I understand a lot more, a whole lot more. Like I've studied, I've read it. I've, so I want to go back to that, and then I can start slowly. But along that way came the boys. So that's a different channel in there. So along there came the boys. Then I became a single mom. Then I'm thinking, okay. When people talk about single moms, they talk about them in a, a certain manner that is quite hurtful because you, you don't know. Single moms go through it. They hustle. You, you f it's you. Everything is you. You've got to fight. You've got to make it work. Raise the children. Make sure they're upright. Make sure you, are, you have food. Make sure you provide. School fees, nini. It's a lot. So when they came, I was in that process of in Uganda, they say, I was reshaping, refocusing, repurposing. I was saying, okay, where were the mistakes? What did you do wrong? How could you have changed it? Because now you have a why, an even bigger why. Why should you work hard? Your children need it right now. It's just you, it's just you. Why should you save for them, for their future? Why should you come home early to spend time with them? Why should you? Everything just seemed to rotate around them. And it created a whole lot of meaning. And I told myself, this time, I'm going to do it so right. I'm going to correct all the mistakes. But while I do it, I'm also going to teach my kids. So yeah, so we are on that journey. We are learning money. They are into it. I am hitting my bad debt. Still there, swimming. Kidogo, kidogo. <laughs> At least I still, I still can service it. So I am not in. I'm not worried about that. But then I know that I have learned. And it is the one thing that is helping me reshape my mistakes, are helping me reshape the future where that is concerned. So yes, I am I, am, I know failure a lot. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I was worried you, you, you're gonna cry. I was gonna cry by I the way. I was worried you're gonna cry. No, I'm uh, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is so deep, Caritas. Yeah. It's such a deep story. Yeah. And our it audience is. I know appreciates yeah. uh, your honesty. Uh, the depth of sharing such uh, uh, common common errors, yeah. but really deep. And they deep. think us guys, we have arrived. Yes. They never know that we also go through the same. Yes, common you know. errors to many, yeah. but really sometimes when you see the characters of today, you think. and you hear all this, uh, yeah. the bad, the, the decisions that have been made, mm. but eventually you have a, a success story coming out of it. Oh, that, yes. Uh, your, 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 your mistakes have caused you a better why. And the topic of today, you, you, you bring us back to the topic of today, that yeah. though later on, mm. the why has been discovered. Yes. Uh, the why has been discovered. Yeah. We would like to, to allow characters to take a bit of water as we go to <laughs> Newton. Uh, Newton, this story is very touching. I know that you have your own story, uh, but I want you to first and foremost, first uh, taking into consideration what characters has said. Yes. Uh, a very touching story, very personal, very uh, relatable. True. Share, share a few aspects uh, regarding the topic of today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Eddie. Thank you very much, Caritas. I think today is uh, one of those very, very special day. Not in the sense that today is a palindrome, uh, because if you write the date, you see 22nd, 02, 2022. So a palindrome is is in the way that even if you read it from uh, from the back, it will be the same. So the day itself is special. But then we have also Caritas sharing a very special story to her and to all of us. Uh, it reminds me, <clears throat> if you are an ardent reader of the Bible, in John uh, chapter 4, somewhere uh, verses 1 to like 42, very interesting story at the well. Jesus met a Samarian woman and he asked for water so the lady said you can't be asking for water because jesus was a jew and she was samarian i mean they can't mix but th there is something subtle about the conversation at the well we have a youth meeting a woman and for the very first time sex is not in the picture and jesus is telling her if you knew who is talking to you, you would instead ask me for the water. And when you f drink it, it will chew a thirst and give you life like forever. 
Now the idea, if you listen to Carita's story with, with a lot of intent and deliberacy, what she has shared, if you feed on it, you would live with it for a long time, as in for life. She's being honest about her failure. She's even happy about it. For me, as uh, a person who talks about money and labors with the headmaster, sir, headmaster, sir, <laughs> uh, to, to talk to people about financial literacy, I see a typical story of germination. And, and I, I mean, they, they taught us science in, in, in primary school. But the typical story of germination is thus, that for every seed that will be put in the ground, of course, it will start by imbibition, where it opens up and water enters it. But the idea that it has to first rot before it sprouts out is, is what the story she, she's sharing. Her story is not different from mine. It's not different from any one of us here. It will, it will just be on the aspects. For example, in my story, I, I told you that after campus, I was the money lender. So I came to the city, a guy gave me a room, and he told me, Newton, you helped me during my, I was the campaign manager for uh, a one Charles. I think you, you, you must have watched Deception. The, the guy was Chris. He was a good pres presidential candidate in campus, and I was the campaign agent. The, I, I was the chief campaign manager. And we spent all the money. We ran broke after campus. And he told me, what you did for me, I was touched. I'm going to give you an office in the city for a full year without, without you bothering to pay rent. Now, it's, it's like giving someone a car when they do not have money for fuel. They will either borrow or ask for it, but they have, they have a car. It will just push them to driving. So they gave me an office in the city, and I did not have what to do in the office. So I was with my great friend called uh, Tony, R.I.P. He, he actually passed on last year in November. So we started looking for the different things to be done. And at that particular juncture, something, a, a hunch well, came to me and I was like, okay, what should I do? When I was at campus, I was lending out money. And now people who are, uh, who, who are in the field are calling in for the money. Let me start lending. The thing in, in Luganda, we say, I brought my dad on board, brought my uncle on board. They gave me lots of money. I started lending. But remember, I do not even know why I'm lending. But I have money. Whoever borrows, I give them. So I, look, I, didn't have, I, didn't, I also didn't have a business plan. I didn't have um, any specificity on how to lend. So people would come and I would be like, okay, if I could lend Eddie, and Eddie comes with the wife. I could lend Eddie. I could lend Eddie's wife if Eddie's the surety. Then I could also lend Eddie's uncle if Eddie's the surety. I could also lend Eddie's uncle's neighbor if Eddie's the surety. So I gave out money. I was just giving out money. I had a lot of money, and it accumulated. But I wasn't asking for security. I wasn't. I wasn't. Actually, the only thing they were giving me was maybe land they, they were giving me checks, posted checks. So during the credit crunch, you know, a pack of cards, the thing came from hero to zero on the ground. So I didn't have the money to share with, to, to give um, my funders. And I tried pursuing everything. You go to courts of law, you go to police, you sit in meetings to negotiate and everything now ran amok. So that's when I realized that actually, even though I had a lot of money, I didn't have an asset. I couldn't point at a piece of land. I couldn't point at a house. I couldn't point at anything. But I had, I had millions because they had accumulated and I had brought investors on board. So that's when I sat back and I was like, okay, I think I made a mistake. But I want to to redo the same, uh, it must be in Luke 5, 4, uh, where Jesus is talking to the, 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 the disciples, and they came to tell him, we spent whole night, we couldn't catch any fish. 
and he's telling them, I think that's where we get the motto from Smack Duke in Alton, to launch in the deep. So the lesson there was Jesus did not tell them to change the lake. He did not tell them to change the nets. He did not tell them to change the business. He did not tell them to change the people who were fishing. He told them to use the same lake, the same nets, the same people, even the same time they are fishing. But this time, launch, as in do that same thing, but this time deeper. So it dawned on me that I have to redo landing. I wouldn't go into another thing. I have to redo landing. But now where would I get the money? I did not have any money. So something came, another hunch, and I was like, okay. There was a guy whom I had lent money, and he had left me a title. I'm going to talk to him into helping me with his title, where I would now take, he would give me powers of attorney. I would borrow on his title. The bank would give me money. So me, I would sort the bank. Meanwhile, I will, uh, I will tell him he, he no longer owes me money. You get the exchange? So his debt e exists, but I'm telling him we will write it off as long as you give me powers of attorney. Me, I borrow. So I borrowed from two. I, I, had, I had this plan that let me go to UK. Let me go and do a master's in a top-notch school. Excel. Get a job. They, in the UK, there was something called the post study work visa. Let me go get that visa. The visa was for two years. Let me go top-notch university, Excel, get that visa. Work for a year to recoup the money I've borrowed. Work for the second year. Get all now the capital. Come back to Uganda. So, and it all worked out smoothly. I mean, go, go, going abroad is hard because I wasn't on a scholarship. I had to show the UK government that I had 200 million that would fund the whole thing. So I partnered with my dad and I found a way. I borrowed from those two banks and we put the money on the account paid some fees, moved. But I want to promise you, if you are an ardent reader of the Bible, you will find it in Job 1 and Job 2. The moment you showcase that you are on the move to greatness, the negative forces are in that meeting, they are taking minutes, <laughs> and they have action points. You see, the, 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 there is that thing of Someone taking minutes without action points, Eddie. <laughs> but the guys are taking minutes with action points. Because I want to promise you that when I moved and landed, that's when everything started going berserk. The landlord who had advertised that I would be paying per week, he told me, you were a foreigner, you would pay a full year. Where would I get all that money? So things started changing and changing and changing and changing. Then by December, that's when we got to know that even the house I had gotten in the UK, however cheap, it wasn't a house for a dwelling. You see, when, you, when you're on self-sponsorship, you're looking for all these cheap things. So they will show you a house owned by a Moyendi. And you're like, aha, and a Nyumbe Jokola. Kumbe, it does not have central heating. It does not have double glazing. So during the winter, it is minus 10 outside. And it is 2 in your room. So we were there. We were foreigners. It was so cold. Now, the, the more chaos it was, I didn't have the money. Now the bank started chasing my dad. And we were like, so my dad could not let the cat out of the bag immediately. So they looked for me, looked for me, looked for me. They couldn't find me. They were like, let's threaten him that would now attach his things. So I realized that in December when it was too cold, in Uganda, there was no money to come from Uganda. In fact, banks wanted me so badly. Now, the university wrote to me and told me I should add more money. I did not have the money. 
because I didn't have money, because I didn't have a job, imagine I thought that if I land in the UK and I have my degree in statistics, I'm an Oracle certified professional, I would work on a system. The system in the UK is designed that if you were a foreigner, you will start by being a cleaner and do many, many jobs. So this is the situation I was in. And by December, I had decided I would return to Uganda. So it was too cold. The landlord called me, wanted this rent. And I, I, I usually laugh. Uh, I remember he called me and asked me, Newton, I'm like, uh, yes, Mr. Hazari, are you answering from the house? I'm like, I, because it's cold outside. He told me, ah, ah, you have to answer this call outside the house. <laughs> you are in rent areas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it haunted me, and I was like, the very first building I'll build will have, I'll call it Pulley Green. Be because of the Pulley Green place I was in and the nostalgia I have for Pulley Green. So, I had decided I was returning to Uganda because I didn't. I didn't have, I, didn't, I, I no longer saw what it would really mean if I stayed. The university is bothering me. My housemates, I owe them money. The landlord wants money. In Uganda, when I see my dad calling, I'm like, ha, ha, what are they saying now? But then, in the middle of all that, I sat down and I'm like, okay, if I went back, I would leave the degree. If I went back, I wouldn't have the money. If I went back, I would still have to pay those loans. It, so the purpose of staying by far outweighed the decision to leave. And it's, it is so important for the people who are watching us to start attaching importances, be huge importances to things they want to do. Because in the middle, something will come that prompts your rotting. It could be a job that you really want it, but you're going to be tested on it. Remember, the angels went to the God, and when they reached God, they could not even speak, but Satan took up the agenda. When Satan took up the agenda, he's the one who spoke, and God asked him, you man, where have you been? And Satan said, ah, I've been roaming around the earth. They asked, have you seen my man Job? He said, ah, I'm seeing the man. But I think he praises you because you give him property. So God was like, go touch, but you do not touch the man. So you realize that God and Satan have the same government. He has been sent to disorganize. And they come again and they mention it in Ephesians 6, 11 to 18, where they tell you that we have principalities. The guy we never see. The guys we never see. And they bother us. First Peter 5, 8, they are telling you, that the devil is like a lion prowling and roaming around you. So when you are on, on the job, it will seem nice. When you are in the business, it will seem nice. But we shall ask you the simplest of questions. Are you ready for the rotting? Because the rotting must come. It could be a fight with your boss. It could be a fight with customers. It could be this huge thing. But at the end of the day, if the purpose at the end was bigger, and it's meaningful, because if you, if you, I, I've loved Caritas' message, because it was honest, and she was telling you she did not seek advice. She did not bother that. She did not bother about that. She did not bother about knowing about money. But she's in the game of the money without the rules. Now, it's, it's, it's like coming in the money game without the rules how will you play if you do not know that this is handball if you do not if it's if if, if money was a football game and you in and you're playing and you do not know that touching in the box is a handball this is a free kick this is a penalty this if you do not know those things then you've lowered your chances but the beauty and why i love that story is she she stopped at some moment and organized herself to say I have to first leave this thing. Because we always get lost in the moment that I have to be there. They gave me a contract. I have to be there. I want to tell you that I finished the degree. And thank God it was a first class. And now I started looking for the job. 
But because I told you the guys are always in the meeting with action points, the Home Secretary at the time was Theresa May. And we as promised people in the UK that we shall lower the number of foreigners. We are removing the post the work visa. Now imagine, I'm almost there. They remove the there. So, the re so I'm, o I'm almost nowhere. You get the idea. So wh what really happens is now I'm like, what do I have to do? I applied for all the jobs. We could, we, we could get interviews and we could beat the interviews. But then at the end, they ask you, oh, Mr. Newton, uh, could you please tell us uh, your visa status? And you're like, um, students. Uh, we're sorry, but we'll get back to you. We'll get back. Everyone is getting. So we would save those numbers and get back to me, get back to me, get back. So it was that tough. And I want to promise you that I did my final interview on 30th January 2013 when my visa was expiring on 31st. So finished the interview, landed on a plane, came back to Uganda. And my dad was picking me from the airport and he was telling me, banks are looking for you. You cannot sit in the car with your head high. <laughs> so I had to be in the car <laughs> that whole entire journey. So what I realized was now you require to be flexible. Because COVID is our best chance at rethinking, at refocusing, at reshaping. You can wake up from 2020, you, you, you can work for 10 years without ever stopping to think why you're even working. For te you can even do it for 20 years. The salary comes, you see people being promoted, you see very many, but you've never asked why are you actually working. So if you ask yourself that knowing what I know now, this is my job, this is how it pays. Am I going to be able to look after these three individuals and my wife? If you cannot, then it, the importance of this talk is that, that you sit back and you reshape. There is no reason for you to want to go to Ginger and you are in the car, you want to go to Ginger. But you reach Busega Roundabout and instead go to Masaka. You reach Kayabwe. You jump out, you ask border border guys, ah, bane, njaga genda ko ginger. They tell you, ha, ginger road, you love to go back to Busega and then take and go back. If you insist and you drive forward, you're going to Masaka. Going backwards, wastes fuel, wastes time. You even look, uh, the, the new word is dimwit. You look at dimwit. <laughs> But the idea is, it's the best way to actually organize your life. So I realized that people need to know that pulling out for a time, pulling out for a life, is part of life. It is also okay. Thinking about changing a job without that job actual, the job actually changing your life, it is still going to massacre when you want to go to Jinja, you can pull out and really reorganize. Uh, I remember I got a job, a very well-paying job uh, in, in, in an organization. The contract was for five years. They told me when the U.S. government is giving you the pay, it will be high up there. And actually it was high up there. I even renegotiated and they increased the money. So after one year, I had to quit a four and a half year contract. Because now I realized that I had seen some things. And my calling was to talk to people about money. I had seen it as I was growing, but I didn't actually realize that this was my calling. I had seen it, you see, in primary school when I look at all my report cards, they say, Newton has been Newton has been excellent, but the man is talkative. <laughs> my teachers saw my abilities to speak as all as P1. My parents didn't. I didn't. People around me didn't. So there is some strength in you, and people might see it different. 
But it's only when you pull out and you're like, wait a minute. I think I can speak to people. And if people are interested in what I'm speaking, then I should add a charge to it. But the importance is, now when I add the charge to it, it's not the amount of the charge. What will I do with the charge? So I want to, to, to hand over to you uh, again, Eddie. But the, the, the message for me, it, 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 it's clear that these people will need to start acquainting themselves with the money game and the rules of money. For example, what's the difference between making and growing? If you're an employee, you're making money because you're exchanging time for reward. That's, that's the definition of making money. A money maker exchanges time for reward. That is so simple because God created us with all the abilities to make money. However, and a big one at that, you need to get now the money you've made and you start growing it. How do we grow money? By selling something. And I do not care whether you're in that office. What are you selling? You see, all the wealthiest people we know, all of them are selling. Who is the richest man in Africa? Isn't it Dangote? Would you separate him from selling cement? Who is the richest man in Uganda? You would all mention all the names. But one of them you will find is either selling food or selling space or selling kachira sugar or selling... As in all these things. The wealthiest men are selling. When we skip and we go to Europe, the wealthiest man, Bernard Arnold, is the owner of LVMH. Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, they are selling bags and cognacs and whiskeys and all this. When you go to US, Jeff Bezos even does not sell anything. He owns the market. He says the market is Amazon. So people need to start knowing and, and I'm mentioning this because I, I realize that more people who are employed are viewing this. Indeed. The job has been created to give you a seed. It won't do anything more. It will give you maybe, it, it, it will give you the experience and all that, but the money from employment will be a seed. It has to be planted somewhere outside and you could plant it in things, but these things you might say that if they grow, we could sell them with money or we have all these things around us which, which will improve our lives. Over to you, Eddie. Thank you. Another wow. <laughs> this is the moment when I'm supposed to clap. Hey, okay. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's it. It's uh, two different stories. Yes. All under the underground of the same principle regarding the why, the importance of purpose and refocusing. You are amazing. You have a strong story over there. Thank it's, you. It's a very strong story. Thank you. I know it, yours is not about to make me cry. I love hey, you more. I hey. love you more. It was, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's one of those very touching stories. But I, I, I hope the audience doesn't miss the pointers. Uh, clearly, from what I see from Caritas' story and Newton's story, is the fact that you cannot enter the game without knowing the rules. And, uh, and, and here, in trying to refocus, uh, repurpose, we are trying to say, it's an opportunity for you to sit back, understand the rules of the game before you engage. And, and Car Caritas, I will be coming back to you uh, regarding your story because I think you mentioned something to the young people. And I, I just wanted you to, to share in the aspect of uh, knowing the current generation. You know, we haven't had, a, the current generation doesn't have 10 kilometers of walking on foot to go to, to fetch water, to go to school. They hear your pain, but probably don't understand it that much. They are like, I, I do what I have to do when I have to do it. And um, they are in that scenario which you shared regarding the time you spent earning money without even knowing how much it was and why you were earning it. And many of them are in that space. In fact, many of them are doing things because of the impact we are having of peer pressure. Uh, peer pressure. And peer pressure is the, is the highest signal of having no why. Because then you, you just follow what uh, other people are doing as your peers are doing. I, I wanted you to just uh, focus on, the, on that generation, born 1985 and above. Uh, the, 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 uh, they are the employees we have here. Uh, we've yeah. seen them, I think the percentage is about 30 or so percent. Mm. Uh, how does this definition of why help such an individual recognize that the life they're living today could be better, well-focused, 
and more bearable to pain in times of struggle to achieve their purpose. Over to you, Caritas. Thank you. Um, first of all, the, the, this, I call them the social media generation, uh, the 1985, and they're so blessed. They're so blessed. I mean, first of all, they're competitive. They're, you know, aggressive in whatever it is they're doing. They're, they're, they're knowledgeable. They're educated. You know, they've got, then they've got the power, which is social media. Basically, they're in a good time. But then also they have NSSF that comes up and says, Yo, we're here to teach you. We're here to tell you. We're here to advise you. We're here to learn and learn and learn. You know, so they have everything that they need. But yet, um, I feel like sometimes they're just going through the process. You know, you go through a process and say, ah, Charlie Muto, it's okay. Those ones are, it's okay. I've not yet reached there. I'll deal with that one later. It's not everyone who's thinking on that same wavelength that I've got to do it now. I can't wait. I've got to start saving now. I've got to start putting money on that land now. I've got to, you know, you've got to start making the money work for you now. And for you to, to start making that money work for you now, you need to find a why. The why actually does so many things even away from finances. It, it helps you focus. It helps you focus. It helps you, whatever it is that, you, that goes on in your life is, 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 is driven towards your why. Like I said, my why became my boys. So it's everything. Even when things are going wrong around, when people are talking about drug abuse, when people are talking about whatever they call it, I think about my children. When th people are talking about the environment, I'm like, oh, my why? You know, we need the environment good for them. So it's finding your why. But I wanted to talk to them separately first. I wanted to first talk to the girl child. Um, girl child. There's nothing as amazing as having your own money. That's the sweetest money ever. It doesn't have any pressure, has no conditions, has no... Like, I mean, it is the sweetest money. You look at yourself and say, that was me. That's me. I woke up this morning. I went into a meeting. I gave my best. Or I, w I went, I purchased, a I made a very good purchase, and then I made a good bargain, then I got a good client. I mean, that was me. So, girl, child, I mean, it is now. Honestly, there's nothing about waiting. Oh, I'm still in my 20s. I've got to wait. Ha, huh, you're going to blink, open your eyes, and you'll be 30. Before you know it, you'll be in the beautiful new 20s. That's the fourth floor. And then you're going to be struggling like many people are, like many of them do struggle because then you're thinking, ah, all this time that I spent, the mistakes that I made, all the time that I spent spending money on things that didn't matter. Because, see, you're on social media. There's a lot of pressure on social media. Let me tell you, I told you I used to own shoes, like so many shoes. I didn't need them. I honestly didn't need them. Like, I mean, how many am I going to wear? Wear one different one in one foot, the other. Like, I mean, when am I going to wear all those shoes? Let's be realistic. Unless you're going to go to a party, a different one every hour. Then even handbags. Nowadays, I'll carry the same handbag for I don't know how long. And I'm like, I don't even, yeah, it doesn't really bother me. Because now I'm more mature, I'm more knowledgeable. Now I know I have my why. Every time I'm walking, I highly, I, my sister kept saying, eh, growing up is good, but I tell becoming a mother, I think, is even different. Because I walk into a mall, I leave home, I'll tell her, you know what, I need to change my wardrobe. Kakati, I saw a shop. I walk, I go to the mall. <laughs> I see a kid's shop. Program nature. <laughs> I get into the kid's shop. I, I'm thinking, oh, the boys would need this watch. The boys, oh, the sandals would look good on the boy. Somehow my why keeps coming in, even when I hide, I'm not even thinking about it. But you're on social media, and you see the lives that others are living. Even what you see us. You watch us. I mean, I talk to girls, and when I tell them my story, they're like, oh, you grew up in the ghetto, what? You did this, yeah, really? You fell down, you, you stood up, you've been brokenhearted. Yes, yes, yes. Everything you see on social media isn't what it seems. So you see this one where carrying a whole set of Louis Vuitton. Sometimes maybe it is grade D. I mean, they'll give you a Louis Vuitton. If you don't know it, I'm telling you, you will carry and lie to us for forever. So yeah, so sometimes you see it and you think, oh, she's carrying a, a Louis Vuitton. That's like 2K. She's wearing a Hams. 
That's like 3K. Wow, I would like that bag. You know? But do you really need it? Is it the oxygen? <laughs> like, honestly, you think about it before. It's like when you're going to have unprotected sex. I've got to say this, I'm a mother. You, you think about it. It's only... Okay. Even if 10 minutes, Kali, was to you. After the 10 minutes, uh-huh. Then what? You understand? So you've bought the bag. You've brought it. Okay, you've carried it. Uh-huh. It's not going to open any door for you. It's not going... Honestly, you really have to be very realistic and do not let the pressures out there make you make spontaneous and realistic decisions. You will regret it in the future and you won't be able to turn it around because right now there are so many financial opportunities. Even if you choose to use social media for yourself and make it make money for you. No, we don't. So we'll see. I've seen the girls on there. They buy jewelry. I support some of them. They sell makeup. They do this. And now, you may be doing that at the back, maybe your financials are not really flowing, what, 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 whatever it is, is not working out well. Yes, that one needs to get some financial uh, literacy. You really, really, really need it because money can be sweet when it is working in the right direction. I've seen, I've, I'm learning slowly. You know, I have a car. Someone tells me, Kytus, what do you mean? Why? Why? I move from point A to point B. Why? Who's, who's pressure? Why are you putting your pressure on me? I, I don't need it. I'm still okay. Call the mechanic. Do I need any? No, you're good. There are decisions you need to think through every decision clearly because it matters for your future. And your future is not far away. It is here because you're going to start working on your future now. You cannot wait. You do not have time. Time is not on your side. I mean, there's so many things that are happening. Things are changing. You have... You're in a good space. But here's the fact. The fact is, you cannot run away from financial literacy. <laughs> it's a sad fact. Like, I'm sorry. You cannot. It doesn't matter what you're going to do in life. You can't. You are the future generation. You're going to lead us. You're going to run this world. You're going to run your parents' business. and what? what do you know about money? You're going to be the future generation. Are you going to run our economies down? What do you know? It's now. It's not tomorrow. You know, don't concentrate on the, the noise. Blank out the noise. You don't need, if you don't, if it is not important, then you don't need it. Don't spend on it. Not every money in your hand is to be spent on all these things. So think about it. Even if it's money that has been given to you, still, it could do something for you. Learn all about bad debts and good debts. Make good decisions. Put money. Don't buy liabilities. Don't invest in liabilities. Don't, 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 don't even invest. Don't buy liabilities. Don't pay for liabilities. Buy assets. Do so, I, I've learned slowly. I'm work in progress, but I am on the right track. But yes, do not let the pressures of the world derail you. Caritas, you were speaking to them as if they were here. I'm a mother. And they, they <laughs> actually are watching you very closely. In the audience, we would like to say thank you very much for those who have tuned in. This is not like any other. Uh, the headmaster, sir, said that they have had several, but you find that we are speaking to the heart and soul today because what we are talking about is about life is purpose. The focus, uh, that shape that drives you every other morning. We want you to be able to take these stories to heart and pick the, the pointers. Uh, Caritas, you spoke to the girl child. I can't leave you without oh, speaking yes. to the boy child. I, I, it's just one of those I can't leave you without. Yeah. The boy child has been forgotten, uh, characters. Uh, I will tell you as an HR profession, when we do the interviews, these days you find the ladies coming to the interview are just so hot on topic. And the, and the gentlemen are fumbling to speak about who they are and what they are pursuing. And, and they are getting lost out of this process. So I don't want to happen it here. Uh, happen here in my presence when you're speaking about the boy child, uh, the girl child without mm. the boy child. Boy child. Oh, boy child. I love boy child. I love boy child, first of all, because boy child has a sense of innocence that he doesn't know. There's something about boy child that they don't know. Um, and I'm seeing it through my boys, through the young men that I work with. And here's the thing about boy child. My kids the other day told me, Mama, we want to start a business. I said, Ucho, you do? Yeah. What business? Mama, we're going to make pies, sausage. Oh, I said, oh, okay. Where will we sell them? You'll take them to your workplace and sell to your workmates. I said, oh, 
okay, okay, this we have it figured out. I said, okay, so, okay, you know what's going to happen, right? You're going to have to write for me a plan. You write for me, uh, first of all, your menu, what you would want us to, to make, and then we have a list of ingredients, and then we see how to make the money, but you also have to contribute. I contribute a little, but you have to make, because they do, they do chores, they do, they earn. So yeah, so it got me thinking, I, and it challenged me, and I thought to myself, I cannot stop their dream. That seems like a dream. It starts small before you know it. You're a big brand, I don't know. But I'm thinking, since it's financial literacy, how about we also go with that? Okay. So we're working on that one to start that business. So it's boy child there. So you're thinking, I need boy child to understand money. So I'm going to move from boy child of my age. Then I'm going to move to the boy child a very interesting group of boy child. I was telling you, Smile. So when Smile was started, eh, the people who were against it the most were the ladies. And I understood why. Because you see, the young men in Smile, the gentlemen, yeah, the gentlemen in Smile have understood a certain level of financial literacy. They know the money they make. They know how they want it to work for them. I am not going to take off my money core transport because we are both possibly going to benefit from the time together. No. I'm not going to spend here because I don't see why I should spend there. But that's a very, it's, it, to somebody else, it's a selfish way of thinking. But if you think about it, they're planning their money, which is what we are saying. Plan your money. The problem is, I am planning my money and it doesn't involve you. You're nowhere in my budgeting so you're hurt about it but first come down and first understand why I'm doing what I'm doing but then it then takes me back to the girl child to make their own money whereby you've made your own money it does not control these decisions where when it comes to relationships I don't have to be with this person because of this because they're doing this for me because you know you're tied in there you're prisoner of it because of money which money you possibly could make for yourself there's a certain level of entitlement in our young girls sometimes. They feel that, you know, there's a negative vibe there. But you're not entitled. He doesn't have to give you. Who gives him? <laughs> Who gives him when he needs it? I mean, you're, you're, you're caring for yourself. But I'm thinking when my boys need that financial help, okay, if they fail to come to me because they don't want to show mama that they are, or they are struggling here and there, who are they going to go to? When a man comes to you as a woman to ask you for money, what's the first thought that goes through your mind? Oh, he's poor, he's broke. But then also you're saying, eh, uh, stress. Or maybe you're thinking, why should I give him? He's a man. Yes, yeah, so he's a man, but he's human. He goes through exactly everything that you go through. The only difference is male, you're female, but you're almost the same thing. So yes, it's boy-child understa understanding. They're, they're waking up and understanding, but it can only work fluidly if girl child understands that boy child goes through the same exact problems where money is, in fact, even more, more pressure because they have to, they're the providers. So the pressure is on them. So when they fail, it's even worse. That's why we've seen very many cases of suicides. The pressure is too much and most of it is financially related. Some of it is relationships because they fail to meet the financial obligations. So we need to start making money work for us so we don't have all these problems. Wow, again, Caritas, this is the first time I'm hearing someone supporting the Stinger Men's Association of Uganda. <laughs> I, I know you are, you're, they have a chairman, they will probably give you a chairperson, a vice chairperson. Uh, I, I She's the peer, that. she'll be the peer. <laughs> I didn't know that they had already defined their why and they were already in the financial plan. Uh, ladies, I know you are few on the call, please don't, uh, don't leave. Uh, the Stinger Men's Association of Uganda is actually here to help us propel us in terms of financial literacy. Uh, I, I, just, I just want to appreciate you, Caritas. Those are very, very good words to, uh, to the, the boy child. The boy child could be 40 that you're speaking to today, and the girl child. I want to draw attention back to Newton. I know Newton, uh, uh, your primary teacher said you talk a lot, so we are really punishing you, <laughs> keeping you so quiet here. The topic that we are discussing today, uh, we are speaking to ourselves, Newton. Yes. Uh, but I, I want to speak to the population that has uh, uh, of employed uh, employed <coughs> staff members, employees. There are seventy about seventy seven percent of this of this audience so far when we started. I don't know whether they still have maintained that. Mm. But there are those who they feel like they, this COVID came and went. 
<laughs> <laughs> it seems like they retain their jobs. Uh, it seems like, okay, some people had a, maybe some relatives got it, but they, they are okay. They, they, they stayed home, they worked at home. They eventually got back to offices and they are earning their money. Uh, and they are wondering, you are talking about reshaping, repurposing what? I am already in the, in the flow. Is there a need for us to sell the case for repurposing, finding a why, even when they think that things are okay? Uh, thank you very much, Eddie. And I would like to uh, thank uh, Caritas again for uh, the landmarks she has been contributing to in this discourse. I, I want to tell you, uh, Eddie, that life is really amazing if you if you start watching it with deliberacy with the intent it's not possible and i'm going to state it again uh, such that i'm not uh, th there is no uh, any form of uh, someone thinking uh, that would want to contradict it it's not possible that we would find anyone who made it whether you're in vietnam hong kong juba chisoro you you can only say you've made it according to the goals you've set. Have you heard of, uh, the, there, is a, there is a gentleman called the Sultan of Brunei. The Sultan of Brunei has, is the only man we know in the world who has 5,000 cars, over 5,000 cars. But you read that he was going through a divorce. Bill gets with all the billions. You read that he was handling a divorce. Jeff Bezos is handling a divorce. It means even though we see these people in a picture that they actually made it, someone is leaving them. And they are leaving for a reason. <laughs> and you could find they have a genuine reason. Jeff Bezos was handling a divorce when he was the richest man on planet Earth. What didn't he have? He, was, he had plans to go to the moon. He owns Amazon. He had, he had all the money that even if he spent a billion Ugandan shilling per day, he will need over 150 years to leave. So why would a woman leave him? there was something missing. So the idea is, I'm not convinced that anyone would say because COVID didn't shake their account, maybe for them they do not have to repurpose. Life is, is multifaceted. It, it can't have only one angle called money. How are you doing health-wise? You, you could be doing well via money, but you're Cancer is eating away the other side. How are you doing health-wise? How are you checking your relationships with people? Are your kids growing under a dad or under a mom? Are you a good uncle? Could kids fight somewhere else that we have to go to Uncle Eddie, Uncle Newton? You get the idea. So the, the, the knowing the why, when we say we want to reshape, we want to refocus, we want to repurpose, it's because majority of the people the main articulated standard of money we might say needs help but the general body of life needs help that's why we repurpose that's why we reshape that's why we refocus and caritas made some very important points and, and, and i want to anchor on one he talked about needs versus wants if you are an ardent reader of the bible you, I, will, I will interest you to Mark 11, 2, Mark 11, 12. Jesus was very hungry. They were from somewhere. He reached a place. He was hungry. So he saw a tree, a fig tree, full of leaves. And he told himself that if I may only find one fig to eat, I mean, I think Jesus feared ulcers, but he was hungry. So he approaches the tree full of leaves, not a single fig. It is written, he was very upset. 
felt sullen. He was disappointed in a tree having so many leaves without a single fig. Because if a fig tree has very many leaves, it is putting on a show that we are, we are ready. But it did not have. So Jesus cast the tree and he said, May no one ever eat from you. And it dried immediately. But now for me as a financial literacy trainer, I pick money lessons. What did we have in the tree? The tree was putting on a show at University of London. We have a motto, Esse Quam Videri. To seem, to be, rather than to seem. Esse Quam Videri is to be, rather than to seem. If anyone were to aim for anything, it would be better they are, rather than seeming. You remember when Carita said that someone told her, change the car? Change the... There, there are things people around us put us into a condition. And that's when we, call, we need to call in our emotional intelligence. Because think about it this way. You struggle to use a border border from home to the workplace. So you reach late, or it rains on you, or you reach with a lot of that. So the main problem, if we got a pen and paper and we were to write, the main problem is transport. So when we get a car, it should solve the transport problem. However, when we go to buy the car, emotions coincide on this journey. And now we do not want a car. We want something that satisfies us and how they see us. So we will get an expensive car. Now we've jumped out of solving the transport problem. In their book, What Self-Made Millionaires Know, Think and Do, two management consultants, one is Barry O. Peterman and the other one is Richard Dobbins, they said, if there is anyone who created a human being, he must have had the greatest sense of humor. How can you create people who want to have more, be more, and do more? But then, in between them, you embed things that will now fight and contradict these wants. Because people who want to have a good life by maybe buying things, on the left, they are spending a lot. People who want good relationships, they are backbiters, they stab people in the back, they do all these sorts of things. So the idea is, we, we, we need to come and be able, like Carita said, to look at things and say, this must be a want. However, this must be a need. Let me handle the need, I'll come back to the want. Do you realize that in in COVID, people actually realized that they could spend 10,000 in two weeks, miraculously, and no one died. <laughs> but initially, those homes were using 10,000 per day. Now COVID comes and everyone is like, eh, the only money available is 10,000. Gula kewi gula 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 so they are solving the need. However, you will see that they have been all the time spending all the money and not think about these things. So I'll go back to the question where you said there are guys who did not even feel the pinch. They need to look at their life holistically, 360 degrees. If you've solved the money, how are you doing with relations? How are you doing with knowledge? I could tell you, and I'm not bragging, that having done like over four degrees, I went back to do law. But then why would I go back to do law? Because I realize we are in the information age. We even left the information age. We are in the knowledge age. It is going to be impossible that in five years, we sit with people and for them they say they, are, they, they may be poor because they didn't go to school. Schools are on social media. Schools are on YouTube. Schools are all over. 
So you need to be growing and morphing, growing and morphing, but it comes from when you have reshaped, you've, you've, you've refocused, you've repurposed. In Matthew 7, 14, they say narrow is the way to life, but the gate to disaster is this, hu the road to disaster is this huge, as in everyone sees it. This is a financial literacy program. NSSF has invested a lot. Because I remember, um, w when did we start Apollo? Uh, as in the very, very, very first year. 2019, in February, they got me here. I think I must have told the very first lot. And we had the same message. But you will be amazed. For example, if this message went online, how many people are keen to pick financial literacy tips, to listen to Carita's story, to listen to your deliberations, to listen to these deliber deliberations? It will go to Matthew seven fourteen that wide is the gate. If the announcement in this country was like, Tugenda funayo anajako top anyenye wocharina. Fully packed, house fully packed. People need now to start picking interest in learning about money. Make friends who can talk about money. And that's what I have to tell you, Eddie. Thank you. You were just about trying to answer the next question that we are supposed to, hey. see, to take on. So I had to uh, to handle it there. Okay. But thank you very much, Newton. Thank you very much, Eddie. Uh, thank you very much, Newton. Uh, regarding that guy, that lady who thought things were okay. Yes. Uh, wide is the <coughs> gate. <laughs> wide, wide is, is the, the gate. Narrow is the gate. Narrow is the gate, gate. Yes. Is the gate and wide life. is the road. Yes. Uh, I, I see Mr. Headmaster standing up. I don't know whether he has any updates for us. Head, Mr. Headmaster, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Head, sir, Mr. Headmaster, sir. You will get, you will, you will learn. Thank you so much. The discussion is going on. I just want to, <clears throat> just want to interrupt it with a small update. Caritas, uh, Newton, sir, yes, that, the, 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 our social media is blazing and saying thank you. Thank you, Caritas, for that story. Thank you, Newton, for that story. People, I have gotten to realize that people get to, to relate when they see the personal side of the people. Uh, before you came in, Caritas, I, you, were, you were so far from me, but now I feel like, <laughs> yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we have failed in this together, and uh, I am not alone. So, uh, thank you so much, Newton. Thank you so We're going to just take a... Maybe this poll, we should have taken it at the beginning because now it may be a bit... De I don't know. People have th will have thought about it, but let's, 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 no, but let's take it. Uh, if Anna Maria, you are kind enough to please post this next poll, we just want to understand what drives you, what drives your day. We want to sh you to share with us what drives your day in the morning. When you wake up, is it obligation? Is it passion? Is it the need to provide? Is it survival? Is it peer pressure? Or others, what drives in that day? Some of you may, what, what, what makes you wake up? When we were discussing this question, someone was asking me, what makes the other person wake up? And uh, she shared a story that some of them, the, the person I was discussing with, they, they, they wake up because they, someone needs to use the, the couch where they are sleeping. So they basically have to wake up because it's an obligation. You can't sleep in the, in the, in the, in the couch during the day. So what is it that makes you wake up? Uh, we're also going to, uh, oh, I can see about about yes yes yes. I uh, keep feeling this. What we are going to take for the for the purposes of 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 completeness. I'm going to take the first poll again just to see if some ladies have come in and then we feel we see where there maybe it's the gentlemen that are just early. But what makes you wake up? Yes, uh, 200 have filled out. If I can hit 300, then I can get this uh, to stop. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Caritas, thank you so much, Newton. People are, they, they keep sending the messages. What makes you, what drives you, what drives your day? I think let's stop that in the next three, four, uh, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's stop it. And the results are... 43%, 45% of the people on this, on this call wake up because of passion. They are passionate and they, what, what drives their, their day is the passion. 
43% its obligation it was uh, this is uh, this is the multi uh, popularity so you could have answered three or four but the most popular was passion the next popular was obligation then the third popular was need to provide then money came in fourth survival came in fifth others came in uh, came in next that's what people are saying and the results are there for my for my panelists to see on the screen but just in the benefit of of the ladies ladies kindly we'll just relaunch poll one and have just to know and all we, all i want to understand is are you male or female you can skip the other questions all we want to see is male or female just to because we're heading into the women's month and i don't want to carry us to feel like you guys have abandoned her are you male or female please let's answer this again you can feel free to answer the other questions but i'm most interested in the gender the gender one are you male or female male or female yes oh yes oh yes i can see that uh, they are buzzing and we want to finish this in the next one minute one minute uh this is not in the spirit of competition but in the spirit of knowledge just we could have left out our sisters there thinking they are not they are not there but they are there somewhere where are you male or female okay i think we can stop and launch those results and uh, yeah i think uh, the results were true the males are 55 now 55 percent and the females are 45 percent yes that establishes i wanted secret to establish one reason the females are always late for events so yes the, the the number has grown and the females have come in late thank you so much over uh, back to you uh, eddie for the last round of of, of this part thank you sir headmaster sir with practice i'm getting better thank you very much and uh, we want to welcome the increased percentage of our ladies the females who have joined us uh, and a gentleman, it doesn't mean you become pure. This is just a statistic. We, we just have more ladies who have joined. Uh, and as you see, if we were to, to put up the screen for what is buzzing, I think even now Facebook has realized that there is something happening at NSSF. There is a literacy uh, program going on currently regarding finances. And that's because of your stories. I don't think you would have said anything from a book that would have caused this buzz. True life stories. Uh, where we stand is that we have been able to, to ascertain the fact that we need to find a why. It's important. That's a clear. And uh, this can be done through repurposing, refocusing, and reshaping your lives. The aspect that has been shared by Newton and, 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 and by Caritas has been to cite examples, given their experiences. A man who has several degrees is going for law. Uh, a, a person who you thought was already accomplished is trying, leaving a business to start a, again. Somebody you thought was going to pursue money is focusing on children. What is your why? Why are you doing what you do? We are going to in the next session to discuss the element of habit. Once you have a why, once you have a purpose, there are certain things you need to do to keep that habit. Otherwise, you'll fall off or you'll get back into the mistakes that were done previously. And, uh, and I just want to, to leave this a little bit open. Uh, Newton and, and Caritas, this element of deciding that for me, I've failed quite enough. I think I need to rethink it. I am now coming back. Uh, I, I know that uh, Newton almost boarded the plane and came back, but only to remember that he had made a purpose before he went to UK and said, I have to come back with a certain amount of money, with a certain job. He stayed in the cold uh, with such a, a taunting uh, landlord. What are those habits? When you finally define, what are those habits? I don't know whether you want to give it credit or to go, but this is something I'm giving to you. What are I, those habits? I, I, I usually do the ladies' first thing. Nah, it doesn't work. Kara <laughs> says it doesn't work. Nah. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I'll, I'll go first in this case, then uh, she'll come in. I usually want to pick from her. Um, there was a research done by Professor David McClelland. Um, he did, uh, he was a Harvard Business School professor 
I got to know about his work when we were doing um, the, the Harvard Business course at Enterprise Uganda, which is run by the UN. It's called Entrepreneurship Training Workshop. The professor of Harvard traveled in all continents that subsist on this planet, Earth. And this is what he found, that the wealthy in Brazil, the wealthy in China, the wealthy in Africa, the wealthy in Juba, the wealthy all over the world. It's not about their background. It's not about what they studied. It's not about their religion. It's about their habits. Th that was the, the, the common denominator about the wealthy. And you, you, you may try to probe it and interrogate it further by going to any village where you stay and you, and you ask who is the rich man here. If you went to any village or parish and you ask who is the rich man here and they point at a certain home on a hill and you go, you find that man. If you asked him on the first instance and you asked him for money you would be amazed that even though he has it he wouldn't release it it's the same that would go for sudil it would the same that would go to madivan it would the same even if you went to uh even if you went to asia or anywhere so successful entrepreneurs or successful individuals have a habit and they, they characterized and made the course of those habits. They, they, they compacted them into 10. But the very most important one, and I, I teach on this course, by the way, but the very first habit we teach is goal setting. And the idea is, if you do not know where you are going, then any road will take you there. And you do not want to go in any road. You want to go to a particular destination. Imagine being a pilgrim and you're walking from Chisoro, going to coming for Uganda matters. It's 3rd June, right? So you're coming for Uganda matters. But you do not know where Namugongo is. I want to promise you, you will rotate. You will rotate at Busega. Go to Mitiana. Come back, rotate at Busega. Go to Nansa. Na. Until you get to know that I'm shooting to Namugongo and I'll have to travel like this. These are the taxes going to Namugongo. Then you reach Namugongo. So setting smart goals, it sounds theoretical, but it is what drives success. Anywhere, can you imagine God in all his greatness? He had a goal for creation for mankind. And he's telling a panel, let's create man in our own image. Can you imagine? That's a goal. They set a goal. Let's create man. They, they, they did. I think when they were creating uh, these other things, they were just creating. That's why you see when I put you here and I put maybe a coffee plantation, you are way superior. Because you, when they reached creating you, they, God did not do it alone. He did it in a committee. They took minutes. They had action points. Let's create man in our image. He started with a goal. So God is purposeful. God is intentional. God is deliberate. God sets goals. So he created us in our image. And in Genesis 1.28, he's saying, Go ye forth, multiply. Take dominion. Now he gave us the power to take over everything. Land, sea, air. But in our journeys, we, we, we take on habits that actually fight the success. For example, you do things without setting a goal. I remember when I was still a child, I loved rearing rabbits. But I could not sell them. I could not eat them. I had very many rabbits. I could go, uh, get the grass, feed them, watch them eat, help them, do, do, 
help them like go into the baskets and all but i could not make money out of them as in it was a it, it wasn't even a business it had no purpose maybe i could enjoy looking at them feeding but i was not earning money but i would clean the house all the time it's like i was employed without pay so the idea is it could even be a job and you you have the job already or you have the business already it should be part of the journey we should never forget that even if you're the md you've not just made it it's part of the journey you remember what i told you when we were sharing first samuel 17 david thought when he fought the bear that it was over yet fighting the bear was preparing him to fight the lion he fought fought the lion and thought it was over yet fighting the lion was preparing him to fight Goliath. He fights Goliath, finishes him, he thinks it's over, yet it's preparing him to go and encounter King Saul. He gets Saul, he thinks it's over, yet it's preparing him to take over Israel. Now we all know Israel is the country that has a war every second in between, na uh, in between neighbors who want to, to annihilate it. So even if you're the MD, it's a journey. Even if you're a cleaner, it's a journey. The idea is you just have to make sure by the time you finish cleaning, you have done it well. Uh, it, it must be in Mark 10, 44, where Jesus is saying, whomsoever wants to be the chiefest must start by being a servant to all. So it's okay to be a cleaner. It's okay to be a messenger. It is also okay to be the junior, junior actor accountant of the junior accountant but the idea is you must make sure that at every one moment you sit back and ask yourself am i progressing am i growing what are the people around me doing to progress because someone around you is going to do scca you want to pursue something in accounting you want your goal your goal is you must be the best accountant but you're not, you're, you're not in the SCCA conversations. You're not in the CPA conversations. So you want to tell me you will go to the pastor and they make you the best accountant, but you're not in the SCCA conversations. So you need to start now being deliberate and picking on a habit of successful people, setting a goal and saying, I want to be the best medical doctor but I'm looking up to this particular medical doctor. You go, you search for them. They will tell you they have this postgraduate master's, what, what. You go on slowly. You go on slowly. And that habit of goal setting and actually walking that path towards that will always uh, de deliver the fruits. Thank you very much, Newton. Thank you very much. I like the examples you give. You move me. You keep moving me around with your examples. And uh, I believe the audience, too, are able to relate to them very well. And characters, I don't want to water down what Newton has said. Uh, there are people who know if Caritas is there, if she has made it, we shall be like Caritas. What are those, those habits that you think would be helpful for them now that you've told them about reshaping, refocusing, and being able to repurpose, and they have found their why? What are those habits that they can follow? Okay. Uh, first of all, I, I just, yeah, we're going, I'm going to keep preferring Newtons. I mean, goals, once you know the goal, you know it's like your destination, you know where you're going. You're just not moving without knowing where, we are, where you're going. But also, if you're going on a journey, you know how long your journey is going to be, or you anticipate the duration, you know, okay, I might need to carry a snack, I might need to, you know, stop here for water or pressure. You know, you, know, you, you plan it. You know that as I move, these are the things that are going to help me get to where I'm going. You cannot just go without all those other things that come into play. There are so many things that come into play. We've got family. And many a time people think, you're, you've got to die for your family. I'm trying to find the right words there. But if you cannot support yourself, you cannot support your family. But also your family needs to understand that you need to create a taproot first. 
you need a strong financial foundation for you to be able to be useful to them or to whoever else is around. So you need to be able, they need to work with you. You need to have a, a, a system around you, people who are going to help you get to that destination, if it's the mechanic, if it's the, the, the whoever vending, whatever that you will need on that journey. You just need that, I'll call it a support network, whether knowingly or not, or it's something you've planned or not. But you have people who, like for example, now Newton is going to my friend, as in on speed dial. Eddie is also going to be my, as in I'm going to reach out to you guys for pro bono. Pro bono, and I'm telling you now, pro bono for my boys. So <laughs> for my boys, like yes, because I don't want them to make the mistakes. I don't want them to miss out because there are things that I don't know. I follow my passion. I say, okay, this is what I know how to do. If it's TV, it's what I do. I do content creating. I create content. So how can I turn that into money? Okay, so who do I need around me to, to realize that dream? If I'm going to create content, I want to do it this way. I want to be the best. I want to make sure, because me, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to things that I'm doing. I give it my all. So I have to look for those people who are going to make sure that I create the content. It comes out as I want it to be. As in all those factors that come, make sure you pick those people. Do not... Make the mistake that I made, assume that I could be an island, assume that I knew it all, yet I did not know. I just knew what I knew, but I didn't know it all. So yes, it is getting that, that group of people, that network. And don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask because while you're scared to ask, someone else is also going through the same phase because you're thinking, oh, oh yeah, yeah, she sorted. No. So don't be afraid to ask. Do not. But also, the other thing, don't forget to pray for financial favor. I, I am not even joking about it. I'm not going to mince any of my words. It's, it's been good for me all the way. In the 500 shillings, in the 1,000, in the dollars, the pounds, the euros that crossed my path, it's been him. And you're intentional about your prayer when you're praying for it. To the T, your father needs to understand what you want. You shouldn't be shy about it. But as you do that, make sure you bless someone. Be in the habit of blessing another because you've been blessed. The possibilities have come your way. Doors have been opened. So you need to bless another. Be in the habit of blessing another. Don't make it feel like you're obliged. Do it with a joyful heart. There's something about giving another. There's something about blessing another. What happens is you create a whole vibe around. You create energy. You bless. The other one blesses. You, bl you bless, you open up for yourself. It's, it's, I'm going to give you an example. And this is to the ladies, even some guys, if you're a hodo. Every, every two, three months, I clear my wardrobe. Because of the nature of the job I do, sometimes I find myself, and not because I'm being bougie or anything, no, it's the nature of the job. You're taking pictures, you're taking videos, you somehow cannot wear the same clothes over and over. So I find, imagine I do radio Monday to Friday, it's audiovisual. So you need clothes that are going to take you through f Monday to Friday. You know, understand that pressure, <laughs> make sure you've got that. Then I've got to look for the ones for chat room. Then, yeah. So I claim, I find myself having so much, but I do, I clear. I give. There are people I know that have not bought themselves clothes for very long because I give them. When I give, then I end up, I get money. It, it, it kind of creates a whole cycle. Your blessing, you get blessed. When you remove, when you, it's like decluttering. When you declutter, you always create space for the good things. You create space for better things. So be in the habit of blessing. It costs you nothing. I had to find my purpose in what I do. Because when I started the show, I did not understand. I was seeing Oprah, I was saying, Ellen, I want to do this. I like talking to people. I like, you know, listening to them, giving them a shoulder. But then when I went to do the salon, it's God's way of showing me to take me back where I needed to be, my purpose. Be in that show, create the network, make possibilities for people, bless people, and just see those blessings come back to me. But all in this, I'm learning a lot about finances because blessings are coming my way. I don't know what to do. I need to make sure that money works for me. So yeah, it's, a, uh, I'm in a good place and everybody could be in a good place if you just, just be strategic, you know, be strategic about most of these things. And again, don't be afraid to admit that you can't or you don't have. Don't go spending, you're going out, popping, tomorrow you wake up with a hang. 
I, I've been there. You wake up with a hangover, your wallet is empty, you go nurse your hangover, tomorrow is another. Wakaba kubanja, wasalu na kubanja, wenja la wafude to msasuni. I even, I kid you not, you're going to move two, three years ahead and you'll say, Kari, why? You know? Karishas, mm. your stories are so personal. <laughs> uh, they're yes, so they personal. Are. Uh, uh, if it were not for time, we would have allowed this to go yes. on because I know we are learning quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, from the, the story that you've told about people waking up and discovering all along, all along, they had nothing. I've, I know this joke of Omugenzi. Omugenzi, I can't say. Omugenzi, I can't say. I can't say. But it's, uh, it's one of those things that we can relate to regarding financial management, regarding uh, our understanding of how to run our finances. I know that uh, there are lessons I picked and uh, things I've written down. I thought we'd have some time to go through them, but time is just against us because of the sweetness of the stories that have been told regarding finances. Yeah. And we will just ask you to make your, those, those uh, using a minute really, uh, from Newton to, to you, you, those parting remarks that, that you want people to walk away with. There's a lot you've said. Probably they will take months and months thinking about some of these statements. But parting remarks, according to re reshaping, refocusing, repurposing, finding their why. Uh, thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you very much, Caritas. Thank you, NSSF. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, my parting shot will be from Genesis 6.6. 6. Uh, I want to promise you and remind you that you're not the first individual who has uh, struggled with uh, maybe reshaping, refocusing, and repurposing. God had also created my, mankind for, for a main reason, to worship him, uh, for, to praise him and all that. But God realized that mankind uh, was worshiping other gods, mankind was violent, mankind was gay. So what God did, he sat back, realized he had to change this. He called up Noah and told him, I'm restarting. That's, that's when he sent the flood. So if God could see what he had created and he wasn't happy and he restarted, you, you are not any different, my brother or sister. You also have the chance to call up Noah and tell him to make, uh, to, to make the ark and you send the flood to restart Amen. you could restart anything you could even change career you could change job you could change relationship but 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 it's the it's it's the way you would handle that uh, by knowing that if god if nekatonda olaba bya mutabuka ko mweyembera nange bisubulu ku mutabuka ko and i mean it would uh, it it would be uh, beneficial in the end so i would like to thank you for holding on for for this long uh, for purpose for purpose of learning on how to reshape refocusing uh, but uh, I, I'm a person I've enjoyed because I, I usually walk as a learner and I would like to thank you Eddie and Tim. Uh, thank you very much Newton. You, 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 you tune off with that padre, padre voice uh, and it's very calm of you to say that. A talker mm. who is who's saying finally I'm also here to learn and that's our attitude all of us. Caritas. Yes. I know you just spoke so recently, but yeah. uh, parting, parting short. Uh, I talk for a living, but let me try and cut it quick. Uh, first of all, make friends that are beneficial for you, friends that are going to help you, friends that, are, that you're going to think alike and get those advices. Try and find friends that are not in your field, friends who are conversant with things that you don't know, where your weakness is, find people who have those strengths and make them your friends, meaningful friendships. Not every money you have in your hand is to be spent. Not every money in your bag is to be spent. Don't be a compulsive spender. Make sure you sit down and think about it. Every penny, wherever you put it, it matters. So don't just spend every money that comes your way. Um, but also, again, I'm going to say this over and over again. Financial literacy is non-negotiable. It is non-negotiable. The future depends on you. <laughs> the future depends on you. The world depends on you. And if you're able to get your financial literacy game on, and you can do it, um, don't allow the pressure out there take over you. Walk your journey. Don't listen to the noise. Do you. Do you. Surround yourself with good people. Uh, sir, headmaster, sir, do you. Uh, that's my work away. Do you? And uh, this is it. It's only you who knows your purpose, 
only you who knows your why. And uh, until you have understood that, you're going to follow someone else's why. Mr. Sir, sir, Headmaster Sir, <laughs> may I hand over, uh, having had the discussion with these two great people, very, very, very well received. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you so much, Caritas. Thank you so much, uh, Newton. This has been said over and over. When she said, do you, someone, I remember someone said that everyone else is taken. The only person available is you. So be you. Thank you so much. And if, if you don't set up a goal, any road will lead you there. I, I, I just, I, one, I, first I want to get to, uh, just to extend an apology. I offended the ladies when I said, they was they were late ladies you are not late we apologize it is it was there it was but when i said that the, the conversation on the chats just let everywhere and no, 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 no it wasn't here so the, the goal went away from here and it went to everywhere and there was this is, don't stop stereotyping we are ladies we are and i apologize ladies i did i did not mean to offend you uh but do you be you mm. fashionably no don't do that, uh, Caritas. The, the conversation is still going on. I am facing fire here. Ladies, you are never late. I retract this. You are never late. You are just delayed. Yeah, they were just delayed. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Caritas. Thank you so much, Newton. Thank you so much, Eddie. We have one piece of homework to do, and this is to share with the audience that book you would want them to read over the next period until they get to interface with you. Uh, I will start with uh, Eddie Anderson. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, Headmaster Sir. Uh, mm. I think that I have read a number of books that I thought sir, would be necessary, but specifically regarding Papa's, uh, the one that worked for me many years ago was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen yes. Stephen that, Covey. That, that book changed my life. Okay. It changed my life. And, uh, it's about starting with the end in mind. And, and once you have that figured out, uh, many things fall into place. That's a book out. I don't know whether there are more recent versions. I know he wrote about the seventh habits and all that. And he added the eighth habits. Uh, and he had it, yes. And, and, but, but in terms of anyone starting out with, in terms of purpose, it's very important that you, you read the seven habits of highly effective people. Just try that book out. Thank you so much. I'll go to Newton. Yes. Bring it again. What is that book that you recommend that the audience should read? Uh, the audience should. The audience should read the Bible. The audience should read the Quran. The audience should read the Hadith. Everything I've seen in books, and I've read very many books. I've read, I've read Napoleon Hill. I've read Rich Dad. I've read uh, What Self Made Millionaires, Nothing Can Do. But when you read, because the Bible is a book of 66 books, when you read Ecclesiastes, can you imagine? Everything in life has been talked about in the Bible. Everything in life has been talked about in the Quran. So we know these things, but we do not read them. They have talked about construction in Ecclesiastes 11.2, have seven businesses. In fact, eight. You do not know what will befall the land. They talked about COVID in the Bible. I mean, everything is there. So people should start reading the Bible and relating to the advice, the wisdom in there, to life. Then they start seeing how they would walk. Then they, will, they can add. All these books have rich dad, poor dad will talk about saving. The Bible talks about saving. So for me, I will encourage people to read the Quran, read the, the, the Bible, read hadiths, you'll be sorted. The audience is, 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 is wants you to quote something from the Quran uh, so that we have the complete set today. Okay. Um, they can read Surat ad darya Surat ad darya uh, is something, chapter 55, they, they, they say, remind the believers, for the believers need the reminding. They could also read... Uh, the very actually for, for this particular talk a very important uh, verse from the Quran is uh, Surat al-Baqarah which is the second chapter but you read the very last verse I think it must be uh, 258 286 they're saying everything you're going through 
Allah does not give you a task which he knows you won't handle. Mm-hmm. So if you're struggling in life, God already knows you can handle. Well said. Well said. Thank you. God does not give battles, big battles to small soldiers. Exactly. Thank you so much. And Caritas, finally, I don't know what you have to top up on these two books, three, four books. <clears throat> I recently just landed on a book. Uh, one of those books that you, it's not your book, you just found it on someone's table. What I learned from the trees, and what I learned from the trees is basically more of a re- the relation between humans and nature. And because I know we are here for, even if, and if we go back to the Bible creation, God created all of us together. This is the beings, there's earth, there's the water. We literally have to coexist. We also have to uh, understand why certain things are the way they are. So it is, I've just started reading it. It's by Bowen and it's, I'm just getting back into my reading habit. <laughs> I had migrated more to, I, I don't know what happened to our reading habits. Things had changed a lot. I'd actually migrated a lot to podcast, listen more, especially when my eyes started fading. Yeah, reading, yeah, I do more podcasts, but this book I want to read a lot more because there's a lot that I need to understand in that, uh, in that area, humans and the nature that we live in, that we're surrounded with. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Lady and gentlemen, at NSSF we say become better. We want to make lives better. Currently, we are running a program. We are saying become better, become better, a better version of yourself. You owe it to yourself, not to anyone else. The financial literacy conversation is not a group thing. Pull out yourself, pull yourself out of the group, and think about, reflect. If you are reshaping, repurposing, reflect about this as an individual. Do not. Fight the battle for everyone. First fight one for yourself and then use your example to win the battle of everyone else. Do not become a, an HR practitioner at your workplace. Always advocating for higher pay for everyone just to get a higher pay for yourself. Work at your skills so that you can get that higher pay. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go about this conversation on and on and on and on. But I want to thank this wonderful gentleman, Newton Buterawa, Eddie Mugenyi, and the Wonderful lady, Nalongo, Caritas, Karisimbi. Thank, Thank you so much for Thank you. having this conversation of reshape, refocus, repurpose. And it's about my why. From NSSF and everyone else, we say thank you and goodbye.